Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. I had a particularly good day myself, and I wish a little bit of that joy upon each of you. So today what I wanted to do is review a battery that I got from Unit Pack Power for an electric bicycle. Before I review this battery from Unit Pack Power, I'd like to give you a little bit of context by showing you two other bikes that I put together using batteries from a different vendor called EM3EV. So this is a bike I put together about two years ago using an EM3EV battery. This was a great bike. However, it only fits one person, and when Erica visited, I wanted to be able to show around some of the places in New York City, so I put together another one that has a rear seat, and we rode around, I showed her some of the places and these little exhibits, like where they have all the, all the rocks stacked on top of each other right by the river, and you can see that bike also uses a battery from EM3EV here. Now I'd like to contrast that by showing you a bike that I put together several weeks ago using a unit pack power battery. Now the difference here is really subtle, so you're going to have to pay close attention in order to tell me what it is. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm beyond words. Back up, back up! Back up! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is crazy. You gotta tell your landlord about it. Recork this, pop the glass, pop the glass, pop the glass, pop the glass. I went to visit a friend in Long Island with Erica, and we returned. I was sitting outside of the apartment, and I was just clicking through my cycle analyst, and I went to turn off the breakers, because I have a circuit breaker on each one. I turn them off, I get ready to go inside, and... Now, for those of you who are wondering about the configuration, I'll post a little schematic over here. Also, to give you some details on these batteries, this bike had two batteries. They were 20 series, 10 parallel, using 35E cells. Now, 35E cells have the capability to put out approximately 6 to 8 amps continuous with no problem, as you can see here. Which means that each one of those batteries could have conservatively done 60 to 80 amps continuous power output. 
Now, the cycle analyst said that at the absolute peak, I used 46 amps, which is considerably below the 60 to 80 amp continuous that these batteries would have been capable of. Now, I had these two in parallel, which means that I would have had the capability for 120 to 160 amps of continuous power. And as I said, my cycle analyst says that for the evening, my max peak output was 46 amps, and for the trip, I'm typically using 5 to 20 amps for 90% of it way less than what this is rated to output. Some have speculated that perhaps if one battery is charged differently than the other, then only one of them was working through the bridge rectifier. Even if that was the case, which it is not because I charge them through the bridge rectifier, as you can see in the schematic, even if that was the case, one of those batteries should conservatively do 80 amps of continuous output. A few peaks of 46 amps should be nothing. So this is fairly disappointing. And you have to remember, this is a BBS HD after all. I'm not going to try to put more than 30 or 40 amps continuous through that. Also, that BBS HD, I got to say, it's a trooper. So I did an autopsy of the bike. I took it to the store with the help of my friend, the personal trainer. And he brought it there. I plugged it all in after digging out all the burns crap and redoing some of the, the wire connections that were completely melted and burned. And as you can see here, that little BBS HD still works and still spins, proving that my motor did not fail. Okay, we're starting to see the green of the motor piece of the PCB of the hall sensor board. And so I'm kind of clear over there for plugging in the hall sensor connector. That's a wire. That's a very shitty wire, but it is a wire. That's a wire. Very shitty wire, but indeed a wire. And as you can see, when I spin the throttle over here with my phase runner controller, do you see that? That's, that, that's spin. That is spinning. That is beautiful. So the motor itself is actually working and beautiful and uh, just fine, which is pretty cool. So the actual issue with this, as I said before, and as I really just dug through all this potting here to confirm, is the issue itself is not actually with the motor. So yeah, this was disappointing. And to be clear, I am not uh, sponsored by EM3EV. They are not giving me special discounts for doing videos talking about them. I just really appreciate products that don't set the front door of my building on fire to the point where it looks like this, and I'm paying for a new door. They make really nice products. I took apart one of my old batteries on a stream a while ago. I'll link that here to balance the cells because I use 30 Q cells in that battery, which are high output, but they off they tend to go out of balance pretty easily. And that it's really, really, really a well put together battery. You can see it in the take apart video there, how, how well put together this is. If you take a look at their site, they really care about build quality and putting things together properly, even if it takes them longer, even if it costs extra. For me, cost was not a concern. Time was, they usually have a five to seven week turnaround time to put these together. And I was looking to get something a little sooner than that. And well, let's just say I learned my lesson. It's really disappointing because I had asked unit pack power. I said, I'm more than happy to pay you the extra money to use a two wire BMS. And I'm more than happy to pay extra to get premium cells. And I can't really do much to, to dissect something that went on fire in that fashion, but I'm going to take a wild guess that I didn't get what I paid for. It, that, which is quite unfortunate. But it is what it is. I learned my lesson. I will be sticking with em 3 v into the future for all of my builds, because as I said in the beginning of the video, whether it's raining, snowing, hot or cold, fast or slow, long trip or short trip, those batteries just work. Whereas this happens with a UPP battery after literally a few weeks. I did a little bit more research online and I found posts from other people. You can see that here or here or here where other people have clearly had problems with the quality of UPP batteries. These posts are a few years old where they're talking about the quality slipping. And in my opinion, the quality has slipped to the point where the front of my building, again, was on fire. I became very disappointed when I spoke with them and my heart sunk when I realized that the people that are putting these together, in my opinion, have no idea what they're doing. So this is what they said regarding diodes and using batteries. This is a schematic of the configuration that I put together. 
nothing that they said here makes any bit of sense. If you charge these batteries through that configuration and let them charge up so that they're even, and you have these two batteries that are each capable of 80 amps continuous being used in a load that's max 46 amps peak, there is nothing dangerous about that. And for them to make the comment that that is dangerous regarding diodes shows me that they have no knowledge of electronics and should not be putting together large, high-capacity batteries. Here, they happen to double down on the stupidity in a later email by saying that unlike lead-acid batteries, lithium batteries cannot be used in series or parallel, which may cause problems. There are several reasons that this is ridiculous. The first, which is obvious, came from the e-bike discord, where Akbar says, haha, that means their pack only contain one cell. This battery is 20 series, 10 parallel. Every e-bike battery you have ever seen has batteries in series and parallel because one 18650 is not enough to power an e-bike. One 18650 is enough to power a flashlight or a vape. You need to have batteries in series and parallel in order to do this. Now, the only way that it would be dangerous to use them in parallel is if the battery has a three-wire BMS rather than a two-wire BMS, which does not allow you to charge the discharge port. You're not using a bridge rectifier to separate one battery from the other so that one can't charge the other and the batteries are not charged to the same amount. Here, each battery was charged to an identical voltage. Each battery supposedly has a two-wire BMS since I asked for and paid extra for it, and they were being used with a 1200 volt, 100 amp bridge rectifier, which was way overrated for what it is I'm doing. So these emails from Unit Pack Power at best are just trying to avoid liability at worst means they have a fundamental lack of understanding of how electronics work, which would explain why what they sold me blew up. Here's one last point that I find interesting before I end the video. If you take a look at Unit Pack Power's website and go through anything here, you'll notice that there are no 72 volt batteries on it anymore. It's almost like there's a reason that they are no longer selling 72 volt batteries. If you take a look at rear rack, there's nothing there anymore. Triangle battery section, no 72 volt. Uh, there's nothing there that's 72 volt. And if you search the entire site for 72 volt, they have no 72 volt batteries for sale anymore. It's almost like they have a reason for that. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Would you buy a unit pack power battery? Think about it. Think about it.